Hello friends, Tanya here for Trinity Stamps and today I'm going to play with the Baby Bunny Stamp and Die set. We're going to create an adorable baby card because I need one for work. <laughs> um, this is an adorable set with four sweet little baby bunnies and several sentiments and coordinating dies for all of the pieces. Here I've stamped out all four of the bunnies on an A2 size piece of cardstock and I'm also stamping the sentiment welcome little one with some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. I'm also going to use some clear embossing powder to give a little clear shine and raised quality to this sentiment. That is one of my favorite ways to elevate a sentiment on the front of a card or on the inside of the card. We're going to take the coordinating die for this sentiment and die cut that out. I'm using my little sidekick um, just because it's really nice to not have to walk to the other part of my craft room to do my die cutting for some of these smaller items. I'm also going to take another piece of card, or excuse me, I'm going to cut another one of those so I can layer it behind our sentiment. I'm just going to adhere that with some liquid glue. Don't forget that Trinity has some gorgeous, super fun, crafty glue friend glue in their shop. I just am allergic to it. I'm going to show you how I color these bunnies. I'm using the W's, the warm grays to color these. This one is W5 and W3. I'm taking my darkest color and I'm adding that where I think there might be shadows and coming in with the lighter color and blending it all in. I also have Let's see, I think it's R20 and R, oh, what is the other one? 12 maybe? I can't remember. Okay, I looked back, it's R11 and R20 to do the pinks of the noses and the insides of the ears. For our next bunny, I'm using the W3 and I started to use W0 for this one. You're going to see me color the entire bunny um, with the W0 and see that it isn't blending very well. There's quite a difference between the two colors. Um, I do try to make it work, but ultimately I'm going to need to change up my plan. So I pull out my W1 and I come back and I blend over the top of all of the other blending that I've done and that seems to make things look better. <laughs> now for our third bunny we're using W1 and W0 and we're going to just um, add a little bit to each of the highlight no the low light areas and I'll come back in with the W0 and blend all of this this bunny is going to look more like a white bunny and did you see that I put some pink on his little toe beans areas? I thought that was just the perfect little touch. For our last bunny, we're going to use three colors. I'm starting with the, um, is that the W5, W3, and W1? Yes, I think that's what I ended up doing. This bunny is going to be quite a bit d darker. And I had initially thought I was going to color five bunnies because the person this card is going to already has two children and they're having a third. And I thought I would represent each family member with a bunny. However, I couldn't figure out how to make that happen perfectly because ideally I would have taken this last bunny that I'm coloring and mirrored that. And I just wasn't up to mirror stamping today. <laughs> it is quite achievable, but I just didn't want to do one more technique. So now that all of our bunnies are colored, I'm going to stick it back in the misty. I haven't moved my stamps. They stayed in there. I'm re-inking with the Hero Arts Intense Black ink and stamping one more time over the top of the bunnies to just crisp up all of those outlines and details. I find that after you have colored with an alcohol marker, it does dull down the lines a little bit. Now I've die cut all of them with the coordinating dies. So next I wanted to make some gingham background. I don't have any gingham in my uh, stash. So I pulled out this diagonal stripe from the Slimline Stripes uh, stencil set. It's a two piece stencil set. There are these diagonal stripes and then there's some wider vertical stripes. Or is it horizontal? 
anyway, <laughs> um, I did one direction with this stencil on an eight and a half by 11, no, eight and a half by five and a half inch piece of cardstock. And then I completely flipped over the stencil after I cleaned it and sprayed the second side with some pixie spray. And I'm adding the second direction of stripes to create this little baby gingham pattern on our green cardstock. I did start with a light green cardstock to begin with and I'm using Shabby Shutters Distress Oxide ink to stencil this and as you can tell I used not a swirling motion but a one directional in the direction of the stripe to do the ink blending. Now I'm going to cut that down with one of the modern embossed edge A7 stacks to make a four and a half by six and a half inch panel and we're going to pull out the dainty scallop rectangle and circle along with the argyle stitch background to create, it, it kind of looks like a baby blanket in the middle of the um, panel. So I've die cut some shimmery white cardstock for the re rectangle scallop. I trimmed down a piece of white cardstock that would fit inside that scalloped rectangle and die cut that with the argyle stitch background. And then I took a piece of vellum, vellum and die cut that circle that's going to fit behind our sweet little bunny. I'm going to add some, uh, I'm going to add the argyle stitched panel to the dainty scallop rectangle. And I'm going to add just one layer of lightweight cardstock scrap behind that. I had already adhered the gingham background to the 5x7 white cardstock base or card base. And now I'm going to start layering up the different pieces for our centerpiece, our sweet little baby bunny. I have two extra pieces of cardstock that I've cut out with the same die for that central bunny. And now I'm going to adhere, I adhered two of them together, the main image and the extra. And then I stuck that to the vellum and we'll sandwich that vellum piece right between um, these pieces of bunny die cuts. This creates a nice sturdy element and a perfect place to put your glue when you're using a vellum accent. Now I'm going to take some extra cardstock pieces that I have die cut with the same bunny dies as these images and I'm layering those up so they're a little extra sturdy and so they will have a little extra height also. They won't have as much height as the central bunny but they will also be a little raised. Now that we have all of those layered, let's play with placement on here. I want there to be a nice symmetry here. I like how each of these bunnies seems to be gazing lovingly at that sweet little central bunny. bunny. And I'm trying to figure out where I want that sentiment. I decide to set it on the bottom edge of our baby blanket and set our little bunny right above that. And then we'll have the two other bunnies that are facing inward on each side. I'm just putting a little bit of glue on the part that will overlap onto the blanket. And for once, I don't feel the need to put any extra cardstock over the edges that are overhanging the edges of the blanket. I think it will work just fine that way. Now we have some scraps from that gingham. And I'm going to take that piece of scrap and adhere it on the inside of the card, just leaving a little bit of a white gap between the gingham and the end of the card. Now I'll glue that fourth bunny right on the inside of the card overlapping the gingham and trim off the excess. I love when you have a little extra scrap to throw on the inside of the card. Now I wanted a little extra something for the inside of the card and I grabbed a bunch of green um, embellishments that I thought might work with the card and decided to go with the hint of mint jelly hearts. These have some clear green tinted hearts and some uh, frosted green tinted hearts in three different sizes and I'm alternating them in the three different sizes on each side of the baby bunny. Kind of like the hearts are rising out of the adult bunnies on each side of our sweet little baby. That completes our entire card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made my own gingham and customized this sweet little 
baby blanket bunny card. If you did, please leave me a comment below, like this video. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, now is a great time to do that. If you're interested in any of the supplies that I use today, check that description box below. They are listed and linked as always. And until next time, here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Bye-bye.